In 2007, Wrigley's Five Gum would make its commercial debut with one of the most outlandishly over-the-top marketing campaigns ever developed for a food product. Seriously, Five's advertising was the edgiest thing a snack company's done since they decided to put Master Chief on Doritos bags. And that doesn't even come close. Originally named after the five human senses and the five calories in each stick, Wrigley's Five managed to take something as mundane as chewing gum and posture it as the most extreme sensory experience available on the market. Even the names of the flavors were intense. It wasn't peppermint, cinnamon, and spearmint. It was cobalt, flare, and rain. Five was a completely new take on how gum could be sold. A unique approach that focused less on the traditional themes of long-lasting, breath-freshening monotony and more on the visceral experience of the product itself. And this attitude didn't just pertain to the gum. Heck, even the packaging was unique. Seriously, there's a whole case study about it online. It was surprisingly innovative. And it was these innovations to marketing and packaging that made the product so strangely captivating for its time. In 2007, Five Gum was a product specifically engineered for an entirely new age of consumer. Early insights show that Wrigley's Five was looking to target the demographic of, quote, 14 to 25 year old male status seekers, which I guess just translates to guys that are into Andrew Tate now, I don't know. It was a coming of age type of product, one that said hubba bubba's for babies and drew a line in the sand, separating the boys from the slightly less prepubescent boys. Look, for those that grew up in the late 2000s, there's no denying that Five was kind of the axe body spray of gum. And during the peak of the product's life cycle, its popularity was primarily associated with middle school boys. But the truth is, the success of Five's marketing would capture a consumer base far beyond the reach of their targeted demographic. And that was all thanks to a now timeless advertising campaign. But first, here's a different ad from today's sponsor, Displate. Did you know that most home improvement blogs rank how to mount a picture as a beginner level DIY job? Well, I'm here to tell you, it's not. You think banging nails in walls is easy? I can't do it. Look at these hands. I look like I work at freaking Build-A-Bear. Luckily, Displate makes decorating a breeze with high quality, magnetically mounted metal posters designed to spice up any living space. And with hundreds of different licensed and original designs to choose from, there is literally something for everyone. So when Displate told me they wanted to send a few of their metal posters my way, I couldn't say no. I called my mom up and said, hey, Ma, do you want a poster? She said, sure. I said, pick one. This is the one she picked. Do you think I'm joking? No. And within a week, Displate was delivered straight to my door, ready to install in less than one minute. So if you want to support the channel, why not head on over to displate.com slash slow start, where I've handpicked some of my favorite designs to help get you started. And by using the code slow start at checkout, you can get up to 33% off your order. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring this video. The five gum commercials were a high octane, adrenaline driven thrill for the senses, designed to illustrate to the viewer that five wasn't just a flavor, it was an experience and each one was different. The taste of cobalt was equated to being launched at mock speed through some sort of sub-zero pneumatic tube system. The taste of flare felt like skydiving onto the heat of a thousand air vents. And rain was... To be honest, I still have no idea what this one was about, but... That was part of the enjoyment. The commercials made Five's flavors appear mysterious and abstract, yet still enticing. I mean, how are you supposed to know what Swerve tastes like? Well, I guess you'll just have to buy a pack and find out. To add to their allure, the advertisements always took place in a mysterious, uncanny looking testing facility, where the subject was always put through some sort of strange experiment of the senses. Like what's even going on in this one? Why are they doing this? Who's funding this? And it didn't stop there. Wrigley would continue to promote their new brand in print ads, which, in my opinion, were incredibly underrated. Ever tried lying on a thousand vibrating cell phones? No. Ever tried bungee jumping into a volcano? Why would I do that? Ever ride through a whirlpool on an electric eel? These are becoming progressively more ridiculous. All in all, Five Gum's original advertising forged an unforgettably distinct image for the brand that over 10 years later has yet to be rivaled within the industry of snack foods. 
Within a year of its release, Five was practically a household name. Suddenly, gum was cool again, and now Hubba Bubba, Juicy Fruit, Extra, and the rest all had some new competition. No, I'm just kidding. Literally, all those brands are owned by Wrigley. They are the corporate puppet masters of the gum industry. But regardless of this, Five Gum would enjoy over half a decade of well-earned success, expanding into a roster of over a dozen flavor experiences and continuing their epic ad campaign well into the early 10s. But by 2014, things started to take a bit of a turn. You see, Five Gum saw its rise to fame during a time when gum sales were actually starting to dip. At first, it wasn't that alarming. Advertisers were kind of in a state of denial, with an attitude that felt something like, Hey kids, how you doing? John, uh, baby, J junior, J baby, junior Wrigley here, how you doing? Hey, isn't chewing gum great? Man, I love me some five. But really though, guys, uh, please buy our product. Breath mints are taking over our market share. We're a dying industry. This is serious. By the mid-10s, companies could no longer ignore the problem. With chewing gum sales declining year over year, Wrigley was forced to close down one of their major manufacturing plants. It was in Toronto, actually. It hit very close to home. We still don't really like to talk about it. But this shutdown wasn't just a kick in the pants. It was a call to action for Wrigley to completely reassess their marketing strategies when it came to their products. And what Wrigley learned was, chewing gum had kind of lost its cool factor. What was once seen as a hip and rebellious confectionery was now no longer valued within youth culture. And with the growth in popularity of alternatives like breath mints, consumers now had more options to choose from. So, like any company facing a critical loss in market share, Wrigley would panic and attempt to drastically modify their marketing strategies in the hopes that a new angle might help push sales. Now, this is where things started to get weird for Five. You see, in an attempt to update its image, Wrigley would abandon Five's adrenaline-driven attitude in favor of a more down-to-earth style of advertising. All of a sudden, Five's marketing was no longer centered around visceral flavor experiences. Now it was about the joy of being young, taking risks, and the beauty of the human condition. And it wouldn't stop there. Over the next decade, the company would experiment with virtually every conceivable angle they thought they could capitalize on. Seriously, somehow Five ended up going through more phases than the middle schoolers they were marketing to, moving from raunchy to wholesome to... No one's actually done something like this before, you know, taking a piece of gum and making it into a piece of jewelry. Oh! And to add insult to injury, every attempt to rebrand was more desperate and ridiculous than the last. So today, we're going to look at all of them, and point, and laugh. To begin, let's start with Five's first offense. In 2015, the brand ushered in a completely new era, doing away with their tried-and-true slogan in favor of a much humbler mantra. Life happens in five. Now, you don't have to be a marketing expert to notice that this new slogan communicates an entirely different message. Prior to this change, Five's whole identity was intentionally over the top. But here we see an attempt by the brand to equate Five to more relatable, realistic experiences. All of a sudden, the thrill of Five is no longer about blasting out of a peppermint-cooled cannonball. Now it's about the thrill of sneaking out going in for a sudden kiss, or doing ballet. But where these commercials especially miss the mark is with the feeling they attempt to convey. Yes, all of these experiences could be seen as heart-pounding, thrilling moments, but they have almost nothing to do with the thrill of the senses, something that Five's earlier commercials captured so effectively. Look at it this way. If my chewing gum delivers an overwhelming minty sensation, that's invigorating. If it starts making my heart pound, I'm calling 911. It almost feels like Five tried to create a more updated and relatable take on their old commercials, but forgot about the gum in the process. They're also still targeting young people, but this time around, it just feels way more forced. Photos from their website show 20-somethings hanging out, smiling, and enjoying the moment while awkwardly holding gum for the camera like that's something people just do. Look, I'm not trying to be difficult. I understand that it's an advertisement, but there's a huge difference between someone posing with a product like this versus an ad that's awkwardly trying to look organic. But you know what? If Five Gum offered me money, I'd be taking pics with it too. I mean, every family photo, every candid... Anyways, how did Five follow this up? 
Well, in 2016, the company reintroduced Five Truth or Dare, a packaging gimmick that included an edgy Truth or Dare challenge on each stick of gum. I guess the idea is that since gum is a shareable item, then people would be inclined to challenge their friends before giving them a piece. Yes, I know, it's incredibly lame. They tried to push this, did a promotion at VidCon, engagement was poor, and yet somehow they managed to keep this gimmick running for over four years. It was also very clear that this campaign was another ham-fisted attempt by Five to try and pander to young people. I mean, just look at this weird video from Five's marketing team that probably isn't meant to be publicly on YouTube. Five Gum reigned as the hot youth brand for years, but eventually, other options stole our share of the hearts and pockets of modern millennials. So we had to remind them that Five Gum is the gateway to intriguing experiences. Cringe. It's pretty clear that this is one of those videos an ad team puts together every quarter where they flash a bunch of big numbers on the screen so they can all high-five each other in a boardroom meeting. And whenever one of these things makes it out to the public, they are almost always embarrassing to watch. They're always crammed with cringy stock footage of stuff companies think young people do, like frolicking on a beach or dancing in a skate park. Why is it always a skate park? But the campaign didn't stop there. In 2017, Five upped the launch factor by making all their truth or dare challenges a fill-in-the-blank style game, which gave rise to packaging that said things like, what's the most horrible place you've ever Or, have you ever with your pants on? This isn't even edgy anymore, it's just crass. But what made this even weirder was the fact that the next year, the company would immediately follow up this raunchy marketing gimmick with a tear-jerking, socially conscious new ad campaign. In 2018, Five introduced the Hashtag No Regrets campaign, an emotionally charged series of advertisements that documented the stories of elderly people and their biggest life regrets. You can't make this stuff up. If this isn't proof that corporations aren't just the archetypal manifestation of a shape-shifting jester, then maybe it's a me problem. Seriously, I've had weeks to ponder over this ad campaign, and I still cannot wrap my head around what possessed them to take this angle for gum. It is shockingly sad. Each story in this campaign is a personal profile on someone who, due to bigotry, social stigma, or poor living conditions, was forced to live with a regret that they will carry to the grave. And while these videos actually do a surprisingly good job at shedding light on some pretty heavy topics, it still feels really weird knowing that at the end of the day this is just an ad for chewing gum. Now look, I get it. Social issues are important to a lot of young people. And if companies touch on these topics, it will have an influence on their purchasing decisions. But that doesn't make it feel any less out of place. If you look on their Instagram, you'll see what I mean. On August 30th, 2018, Five Gum made a post about Lin, a Chinese performer that was so tied down by work that she never got the chance to travel outside of her homeland. And then immediately after, Five Gum posted, What's your favorite way to Hashtag five truth or dare. Never, never have I seen a brand communicate such a blatant loss of identity to their consumers. It's just off the rails at this point. By 2019, Five Gum's entire brand image is in a million pieces. The popularity of gum is still in the dumpster. And in countries like Australia, the product is just flat out being discontinued. So naturally, there's only one thing left to do. In 2019, Five is forced to make one last act of desperation, a final Hail Mary, with one of the most forbidden marketing tactics known to modern advertising. Pandering to gamers. April 27th, 2020, Five makes its first Instagram post. Don't game without Five Gum. Engagement is clearly high. This one guy claims he almost ate an entire pack of gum while gaming. By God, this might actually work. The pandering continues. Suddenly, every post Five Gum makes is somehow tied to video games, along with baseless claims about how their gum now apparently improves focus. And they barely even need to try. Half the time, they're just photoshopping the gum in front of PS4 controllers, and somehow it's being received well. Then, in October, it happens. A post is made on Five's official Instagram promoting their brand new specially engineered gamer gum.
this is the bad ending. In late 2020, Five Gum introduced Respawn, a gamer-centric chewing gum produced in partnership with computer electronics company Razer. Now, for those who aren't too familiar, the Razer company is infamous throughout the gaming world for taking regular, everyday products and rebranding them for a gaming audience. This goes for everything from beverages, to athletic wear, <laughs> to animated shows, to RGB face masks. Don't let them forget they tried this. You see, Razer was one of the early pioneers when it came to identifying gamers as a legitimately profitable demographic. And that's inspired them to experiment with all kinds of ridiculous products. Which is why it comes as no surprise that the company was more than enthusiastic to enter the gum business. The whole idea behind Respawn was to offer a collection of uniquely flavored gum that promised to improve focus while gaming. According to their claims, Respawn utilized a mix of B vitamins and green tea extract, which supposedly served as a cognitive stimulant. And while I was completely ready to tear this claim down piece by piece, I was weirdly surprised to learn that the science behind these claims is actually fairly solid. Turns out the consumption of B vitamins has demonstrated improved focus in scientific studies, which means Respawn could kind of technically maybe improve your performance while gaming. It's a stretch, and it's much more likely that simply having an energy drink would be infinitely more effective. But regardless, that's not the actual problem here. The real question we should be asking is, who chews gum while playing video games? Am I missing something here? Is this a niche corner of gamer culture that I never got hip to? When has that action ever been synonymous with gaming? Doritos, sure. Mountain Dew, yes. G Fuel, fine, I guess, but bubble gum? Who wants to sit in a Discord call with a guy smacking his lips together? We can't gank top like that. We can't rush B. It's too annoying. In fact, I can prove it. Can you hear me? Yeah. What are you guys up to? Not much. I was just uh, writing an email. What kind of email? That was an email to my boss. I was talking to him? Yeah, yeah, just about um, sorting out. Sorting out. What is. That's so. That's really. That's actually hurting my ears. Can I gotta turn you down? What? What is that? It's gum. Okay, so as far as the actual product goes, from what I can tell online, it doesn't seem like Respawn ever managed to take off anywhere at all. As with most heavily hyped gaming consumables, it always feels like there's a ton of promotion online without the proper distribution to back it up. So, as a result, Respawn's official Instagram page is just filled with 14-year-olds asking why they can't find it at Walmart. And that basically brings us to today. As of 2023, Wrigley has practically pulled back the reins on the entire brand. Apart from a few sponsored publicity stunts, Five doesn't really advertise to the level they used to, and their roster of flavors has pitifully dwindled from over a dozen different options to about four. So who's to blame here? Well, while it is true that the popularity of chewing gum has fallen drastically, it still never felt like Five Gum did themselves any favors along the way. Between the tasteless packaging gimmicks, social pandering, and the encasing pre-chewed gum inside of jewelry— sorry I didn't cover this one in the video, there's not much to it, it's just really dumb— it feels like, along the way, Wrigley forgot what it was that made their product so enticing in the first place. So here's my take on it. If Wrigley wants to get us excited about their product again, they need to take Five back to its roots. They need to remind us what made Five such a captivating product. Remind us that Five is an experience. They need to remind us how it feels to chew Five gum. Thanks for watching. And a big thanks to our Patreon producers.